Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So today we're going to be taking a look at the Flight Aware Pro Stick Plus. Now this has been sent to me by Moonwaker and we're going to take a look at this particular model and how we set it up. Now Flight Aware do have a couple of different options. You can go with a Pro Stick or you can go with a Pro Stick Plus. As you can see on the screen, the Pro Stick Plus has the extra onboard 1090 mix filter, which is great because it should give you a better reception while nulling out a lot of other frequencies that are surrounding the that particular band. Now I have mine already set up. It's actually set up in my shed, in my garden, and I'm using a Raspberry Pi Zero wireless version, which is connected to my local Wi-Fi within the house. As you can see here in the diagram, I have the flight aware stick, uh, then plugged into a little adapter, which is then plugged into the Raspberry Pi Zero. Now the Raspberry Pi Zero is running a special image, which we will look at shortly. Now the antenna that I'm using is a very basic antenna which came with this package uh, it's a it's got a magnetic base mobile style antenna uh, tuned specifically for 1090 megs which is exactly what we want for receiving a DSB so let's go ahead and have a look at how we image the SD card on the Pi and get it all configured and working so first thing you need to do is head over to the flightaware.com website and click on the Pi Aware tab what we can do then is if we scroll down to where it says install Pyware on your SD card, you need to go ahead and download the Pyware on Raspbian. So I'm just going to click that and that will download. Now once that's finished downloading, we can go ahead and look in our downloads folder. It downloads as a zip file, so we just need to uncompress it. So the image will extract to a folder and the file that we're interested in is this IMG file. This is going to be burnt to an SD card. So we're going to use a program called Etcher. Now Etcher is an application which allows us to burn an image to an SD card. So first thing we need to do is select the image, click open. Make sure that you've got your SD card inserted into your SD card reader or into your computer. You can change, it should automatically detect your SD card. Uh, it, mine has here because mine's a 32 gigabyte card. Um, you can click change and then locate the card if it's not selected here. And then all we need to do is click flash. That will then start burning that image to the SD card. Now there's no need to format or clear anything off of the SD card before you do this because this is actually creating a whole new image on the SD card so anything that's on there will be lost and overwritten by this image. Now once we have the Pyware image installed on the SD card we now need to browse the boot folder of the SD card and make a little edit. Now I'm going to be using a Raspberry Pi Zero so it only has wireless. So what we're going to do is we're going to find this file called pyware-config.txt. I'm going to open that up in a editor. This is Notepad because I'm on Windows. And I'm going to go down to find wide network. I'm going to change that to say no. Wireless network is already yes. And then here where it says wireless SSID and wireless password, this is where I need to edit to add in my SSID from my Wi-Fi and also my wireless password. So I'm just gonna put that in. Okay, so once that's been edited, you can now save that file and you can now eject your SD card. You can now go ahead and put the SD card into your Raspberry Pi. Now with your flight aware dongle plugged into your Raspberry Pi, plug the power in, make sure the antenna is plugged into flight aware dongle and power it up. Now you probably need to wait maybe four or five minutes before it connects to the flight aware servers. But in the meantime, what you can do is find the local IP address for your Raspberry Pi. You can do that by logging into your router and seeing the attached devices and the name will be Pi Aware. As you can see, mine says 192.168.82. So this is the screen that you're presented with first of all. Now we can go and have a look at the sky map or we can 
can create an account. So if you haven't got an account already, we can claim this particular installation by creating a new account. So just click on join FlightAware and fill in the details. Once you've submitted your registration, you'll find out that your account is not verified. You need to go to your email account and click the confirmation link. Now, once it's been verified, you will then have an enterprise account because you're actually feeding uh, live data into the FlightAware databases. Now to have MLAT enabled, you will also need to just log into your account on the FlightAware website and you'll need to add your location for that particular FlightAware dongle. It's quite easy, you can just do it using the little map and dragging and dropping the pin to your location. So if everything is working right, you'll see a green indicators here so it's showing that the the radio is working the Pi aware software is running we're connected to flight aware and we also have MLAT is synchronized as well now what we can do is we've got a button here that says go to 1090 Skyview map so we can actually look directly at what the Pi aware is actually receiving now now if you look the address of this is the uh, 192.168.1.82 so that's my Raspberry Pi zero so this is live data that's actually coming directly from the Pi now now one of the other good things is that PiAware does actually output some raw format data. That means that we can go ahead and use some other software to decode and plot our aircraft as we like. So one of the most popular applications is called Virtual Radar. So let's go ahead and load that up and see how we configure it. So this here, I'm just going to minimize that in the background. So this is virtual radar software. I'll leave a link down in the description of where you can download this from. Now it's an application which runs on your PC. And what we need to do is just configure it to take the data from our Pi Aware device that's, uh, that's currently installed. Now it's actually quite easy. Uh, what we have to do is we go to tools and options. We click on where it says receivers. And we can just click on here where it says address. Now mine is actually already configured. I've configured mine already. Uh, the other thing that you can do if you want to is you can go through the wizard. So uh, click the wizard button, a radio that receives and decodes transponder signals. Um, I can select other, type in the address 192.168.1.82, click next, click finish and then click OK. Now that should actually be working now. So as you can see here, it says it's connected. And it even says the number of aircraft which is tracked. So if we click this link here, this little button, it will actually open up another browser. Now this time it's pointing to 127.001, which is our local IP address of this computer. And we are now looking at a web-based um, application that is being generated by virtual radar server. Now with this you can clearly see that we can see a picture of the aircraft when we click on them. So let's take a look at this one. American Airlines. Let's see if we can find something a little bit. Okay this looks like a bit of a small aircraft. Yep there we go. So this is a private aircraft and I uh, wonder if there's anything else of, uh, of interest. That looks like quite a big aircraft there. That's a 747. So you can see how easy it was to, to configure. Now if you're having problems with this, just go back to the options and have a look uh, under receivers, select your receiver and make sure that you've got the port is 3003. That's the port that uh, the wizard automatically put in but you can have a look at this screenshot you've got now. You can also use this button here that says test connection and it will say whether a connection can or cannot be made. But as you can see it's fairly easy to set up. Let's go back to that. So this is the live feed coming directly from PiAware. So they call this PiAware Skyview. If we click on an aircraft, or hold your mouse over actually. So if you hold your mouse over, 
the aircraft, it gives you some information about it. And we can also visit what they call a visit flight page from here. And well, this is giving you where it's flown. So it's going around in circles here by the looks of that one. Let's close that down. Let's try this one. So I've selected this aircraft here and I'm going to go visit flight page. And this is pretty interesting. So this is giving us a picture of the aircraft itself. And it's also given us a took look, it says took off from. So it's taken off from East Midlands EMA. And it's on its way to Lanzarote. It even says that it's 25 minutes late. Wow, this is pretty good. And also the amount of time remaining. Now we go over to virtual radar. Same information, coming from the same source, but just laid out slightly different. We can click the pictures and it will take us to the airportdata.com website and give us a lovely clear image of that aircraft. Well, there we go, guys. That's a brief overview of FlightAware and also PiAware, how to install it onto your Raspberry Pi and view the aircraft around you uh, live, which uh, I think is pretty cool. And, and the whole point of registering as well with um, with FlightAware, like I showed you in the video, is your account then has uh, enterprise uh, features, which is completely different to kind of like the starting or the startup features of a free account. Um, the kind of rewarding you for feeding your aircraft data the data that your PiAware is receiving you're feeding that into their system so they're kind of rewarding you with that now I'm not going to cover all the features that 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 gives you but uh, feel free to head over to the FlightAware website and and take a look for yourself I'll leave a link down in the description as well of where you can purchase this particular kit from and also to virtual radar server anyway if you enjoyed the video please don't forget to subscribe and like and until the next video take care have a great rest of the day and we'll see you in the next one Thank you.